January 10th, 2014. A day during Awesome Games Done Quick, part of two annual speedrun events that have taken place since 2010. Being their first event to raise over $1 million for the Prevent Cancer Foundation, this specific day would host something that many would never forget. On that Friday entering 2014, Luke Miller, known more commonly as Sinister One, would take the stage and play through Mike Tyson's Punch-Out blindfolded. Yes, you heard me correctly, blindfolded. No vision at all, zero. With each boss having its own unique rhythm and timing, Sinister amazingly made it all the way to the final and hardest boss of them all, Mike Tyson. Due to the lack of knowledge, and Tyson's seemingly random patterns at the time, Sinister's journey unfortunately ended there. While this isn't even close to the only notable blindfolded punch-out run, this specific performance would stick in the public's memory for many years to come. Today, let's tackle the interesting niche that is blindfolded speedruns. We are first going to start with the foundational aspects and background of the blindfolded scene. After we establish the concept, with the help of many people in the community, I have put together three short case studies involving blindfolded speedruns. Two detail the blindfolded journeys of Bubsia and Katzen24. Another detailing the specific blindfolded routing of Super Mario Bros. Any% percent. Buckle up, cause there's quite a lot to dig into here. Unfortunately, it can be quite hard to pinpoint the earlier origins of blindfolded speedrunning. One of the earliest properly documented attempts at such a feat is Andrew G at the first ever Games Done Quick in 2010. Before his run of Super Mario Bros. Any% percent, with no previous knowledge, he took a stab at trying the game while blinding himself with a giant hat. With zero preparation, he got stuck in 1-2. At a later Games Done Quick event, Andrew would try this again, and maneuvered his way to 4-1. Once again, he got stuck due to a lack of routing. We will come back to this run, but before we do, thanks to the wonderful resource that is BlindfoldedGaming.com, you can actually find some other older blindfolded runs. One of the earliest documented runs on the site is a 2013 run of Pokemon Yellow that beats the game in just over 3 minutes by corrupting the game's save data. Of course, these runs have more to them than just picking up a controller, putting on a blindfold, and pressing buttons. There are many common strategies that blindfolded runners will utilize to route and ultimately beat their game of choice. Bubsia, a heavily experienced blindfolded speedrunner, has put together a great video called 10 Techniques in Blindfolded Speedruns Explained. While I don't want to copy his video, I do want to list all the strategies that he lays out. All of these techniques are key, and I'll be referencing them many times throughout the video. There are a few that I would like to break down before we go further, due to how essential they are to any blindfolded playthrough. 1. Stratting or Memorization Like I've stated before, you can't randomly press buttons and expect to get your desired outcome out of sheer luck. Runners will route these runs down to specific levels, rooms, and even going input by input. On paper, this is exactly what typical speedrunners do when learning and routing games. In this case though, due to being blindfolded, you need to find ultra-consistent reproducible inputs that can be faithfully executed with the lack of vision. What I said takes us to the next technique that I want to cover. Number 2. Normalization Repeating from Bubsia, normalization is a fixed way to do the same action every time with the same result. This can vary in games, but it typically involves a set of inputs or a specific move that will always produce the same result. This is key in blindfolded runs, because you can know what to expect every time you do an exact movement. One of the easiest examples to use here 
is a backflip in Super Mario 64. Mario will always backflip the same amount of distance if you simply do an input for one. Moving on to another factor, something that goes hand in hand with stratting and memorization, sound cues. Using music and sounds in the game, it can help you time precise inputs or possibly help you locate where you are in correlation to enemy placement or cycles. Specific cases of this will be demonstrated as we get into examples further in. The last major factor I want to touch on quickly is counting. Many strategies in blindfolded runs are formed based on some variant of counting. A lot of counting goes hand in hand with sound cues, such as performing an action after a certain number of repetitive noises, or counting beats and music to know when to perform consecutive inputs. With you now having some background knowledge of a few basic blindfolded building blocks, I want to now delve into today's first case study involving someone that knows these methods more than most others. When doing some snooping around for blindfolded speedrunning, a few different names may pop up, but the first one I want to delve into today is Bubsia. He has been speedrunning blindfolded since 2017, and has finished runs of 60 unique categories between 40 different games. His inspiration for his challenges goes way back further than you would think, going all the way back to 2007. RunnerGuy2489 would start uploading segmented speedrun playthroughs of Ocarina of Time. While this alone was enough to make him a speedrun pioneer, what he started to do the next year would one-up his previous efforts. On March 7th, 2008, RunnerGuy uploaded a video titled Zelda OOT Blind Run Segment 1. Over the course of this 10 minute video, you can see RunnerGuy steadily make his way through Kokiri Forest. Going further down the rabbit hole, RunnerGuy was inspired by another player by the name Genuine's Corruption or Jordan. He has been blind since birth which may make you wonder where this is going. His blindness didn't stop him from his passions. With the help of RunnerGuy and multiple other members of the Ocarina of Time community, over the course of multiple months, Jordan successfully got all the way to Ganon. He has also done many sessions of playing through Pokemon titles as well. Being inspired from possibly one of the only blindfolded players not by choice, Runner Guy would keep up this blindfolded quest for many years to come, and along the way, Bubsia took notice of this. Watching this opened an entirely new world to him. He could replay the games he had already beaten in a completely different way. He stated that speedrunning these games in different ways is an extremely rewarding hobby, and he feels very accomplished whenever a strategized route goes to plan. Going forward, Bubsia would tackle a wide range of games, Kingdom Hearts, Wii Sports, and most notably, Super Mario 64. So how does Bubsia go about deciding what he wants to do? Well, most people who perform a blindfolded speedrun generally do it because they have a specific attachment to the game already. Many people who do blindfolded runs only pick the games that they are the most passionate about. Every game he plays now, he views through the lens of a blindfolded player. If he ultimately likes a game and thinks it's feasible enough blindfolded, he will start the process and begin to outline a route. Once he finds a game he finds a lot of potential in, the process can vary quite a bit. The first thing he will do is search for prior game knowledge. For lesser documented runs, it can take months upon months to put together some kind of route to execute. Bubsy has stated that due to now running multiple games blindfolded, his routing times have decreased due to recognizing common patterns and problems among different blindfolded runs. For example, he was able to route a 3 hour long Metroid Fusion 100% run within the span of 1-2 months from scratch without prior game knowledge. Quite impressive. Obviously, if a route already exists, the process dramatically speeds up due to routing taking a majority of planning. Ultimately, 
Bubzia has broken down the blindfolded planning practice as follows. 75% is routing, and 25% is practice and execution. An example he gave me of this is when teaching Mario 64 runners simply the blindfolded run for 16 star. In only 2 hours, he nailed all the strats for the first third of the run. If that doesn't show the comparison of how long the routing process can be, then I don't know what will. Before moving on, I once again want to give a shout out to BlindfoldedGaming.com, who Bubsia is a part of. Bubsia has no plans to stop, and even did a blindfolded Super Mario 64 run for both Awesome and Summer Games Done Quick 2021. On January 27th, 2016, Dodai uploaded a video of him beating Super Mario Bros. start to finish in just under 15 minutes. What's so special about this? Well, this was the first ever documented full playthrough of the game without vision. While Andrew's efforts back in the day were commendable, this was a completely different level never seen before. Using strategies mentioned at the beginning of the video, Dodai completely ripped open the game in a completely different way never seen before. Sadly, not much else would really come of this. The achievement got spread around, and then everything got quite quiet. One year, two years, three years, four years, and getting close to five years later, nothing else about this run seemed to change. Dodai was the only one to finish a full blindfolded run of Super Mario Bros, and not much else seemed to spawn from it. Unbeknownst to many, entering 2021, this huge challenge would catch a major interest from a few notable runners. Miniland, who three weeks earlier achieved the coveted any% percent world record, would post a video titled, World 8, but I speedrun it blindfolded. Doing a bunch of offline practice previously, Miniland streamed attempts of the game, trying to beat it blindfolded, starting in World 8. In roughly 7 minutes and 45 seconds, he beat the hardest section of Super Mario Bros. without any hint of vision. Comparing this to the only full blindfolded run, Dodai's World 8 segment was roughly 9 minutes and 15 seconds. Assuming Miniland did a full run and entered World 8 at the same time as Dodai, and did the same World 8 performance as this segment, he would have achieved a time right around 13 minutes. Clearly, there was quite a big gap for improvement in the run. But who would be the second person to complete a blindfolded run in one segment from start to finish? Believe it or not, Miniland would not be the only one to continue the torch of completing this blindfolded run. Throughout the year, many people would take wind of the run thanks to Miniland's performance, and a few people were inspired to take the next step. Starting in 2019, Crescendo would steadily make his way up the Super Mario Bros. Any% leaderboard. While his activity did get quiet, he wasn't completely gone from the game. He had watched Dodai's legendary achievement, and entering 2021, took notice of Miniland's World 8 run. Eventually, Crescendo pieced many things together. Watching blindfolded runs had caught his interest quite a lot. He had already had experience running any percent. He also had experience as a musician, and thought that that would give him an advantage in terms of utilizing sound cues in the game. It's probably pretty obvious where this is going. Crescendo did three weeks of researching, planning, and practice. He utilized many common strategies, such as beat counting along with the music, using fireballs as a form of echolocation, and memorizing a put-together route. By June 2021, he posted a video of him getting to the very end of 8-1 blindfolded. His interest and dedication was starting to pay off. This would be the very beginning of what was about to come. Over the course of just one month, Crescendo would make constant progress. One session at a time, he would make it to a new level. On July 14th, it was finally time. 
In a matter of weeks, Crescendo went from barely crawling out of World 8 to beating the entire game blindfolded in under 12 minutes. He not only became the second person to beat the game without sight, but also beat the previous record by over 2 minutes. Over the previous month, he grinded daily attempts for at least an hour or two. In total, he clocked in roughly 40 hours. Crescendo has been so passionate about this run that not horribly long after this record, he also put out a two and a half hour tutorial, going through the entire game blindfolded and showcasing all the elements of the run. I will link that below if you are really curious into getting into the run. With Crescendo's determination, he was not quite done with the game yet. This is still towards the beginning of the journey. You may think that Crescendo would best himself again, but surprisingly, this wasn't the case. Let's quickly back up a year. Crescendo was not the only person that picked up interest in the blindfolded Super Mario Bros. challenge. Steel Dude 42 would start his journey and by October 2020, have posted a video that showed him playing blindfolded to the very beginning of 8-1. He then proceeded to take off his blindfold and beat World 8. He spent an hour every day learning the first half of the game. This wasn't quite the feat seen by others, but it was still a great effort. While he would take a break from the learning process, once he heard entering 2021 that both Miniland and Nifsky were interested in learning the blindfolded run, Steel Dude got a little scared and got back to work. He wanted to put together a finished run and took the time to practice and learn World 8. Entering August, Steel Dude would upload a run that cemented him as the third person to beat the game blindfolded. At the same time, he also beat the record by a solid half a minute. This made him the first person to beat the game blindfolded on actual hardware. His blindfolded journey may have lasted around a year, but he has said that realistically, he could have only taken 3-5 to five months if he had not taken such a hiatus. Now this is where I would have concluded the journey and analyzed the future of the run, but while making this video, two new major developments occurred. Remember how Crescendo was putting together a tutorial for blindfolded any percent? Well after making this, he was still actively working on the run. After Steel Dude took a giant chunk of time off, Crescendo was even more determined to lower the time. On September 6, he uploaded a new run that beat the game blindfolded in almost under 10 minutes. Between this and his previous completion, Crescendo had clocked in a total of 60 hours, attempting to beat the game blindfolded. At this point, I really wanted to wrap things up and call it a day, but going even further, before I could even do that, something else happened. On the same day that I put this entire research together, a fourth challenger by the name Arya Is came out of nowhere and on September 8th, posted a run smashing Crescendo's time with a 9.05, nearly breaking another minute barrier. Over a period of 8 months, over 2,000 attempts, and over 100 hours of practice, Arya is in secret was practicing and attempting to beat the game blindfolded faster than previously imagined. Many may be skeptical at first, but he has shared his progress with the community and has had proof of getting many runs into 8-4 blindfolded. His run had many major developments with faster strategies. In 8-2 alone, he saved nearly 120 in-game seconds against Crescendo. Arya is used in-game music cues to his advantage, and he tried to minimize the amount of beat counting that he had to do. As of making this, this is now the last development of this story. This doesn't mean that this run is anywhere close to dead though. The previous three runners I have talked about all plan to try to lower the record. While the amount of optimization varies from runner to runner, on the extreme end, Arya Is has a final goal of beating the game blindfolded in under 7 minutes. That means that he would have to incorporate strategies that shave over 2 minutes off the current run.
actually, I hate to hold up this section for even longer, but after already finishing and rendering out this entire video, yet another thing happened. Nifsky himself over the past few weeks started practicing blindfolded runs, and he recently posted a video of him beating World 8. One of his goals that he wants to reach by the end of 2021 is to get the world record in the blindfolded category. He wants to get a time below 9 minutes, but says he is happy with any time in the category as long as he can get a record. No matter what happens, I'd keep your eyes peeled on this over the next few months. Once again using the great resource that is blindfoldedgaming.com, you can easily sort the longest blindfolded runs ever completed. Looking at one of the longest entries done in one sitting may completely blow your mind. One person that you will see towards the top of this list multiple times is Cadden24. Cadden's interest originates back to 2016, when he met a runner by the name Ponk. At the time, they were routing a blindfolded run of Super Metroid. While Cadden was never motivated enough to speedrun himself, he did enjoy doing some casual challenge runs of games that he already played before. After hearing what Pong was doing with Super Metroid, he wanted to try and apply that to some of his interests. The Donkey Kong Country series has always been a favorite of Cadden's since his early childhood. He wondered how much of Donkey Kong Country 2 would be possible to beat without sight. He first tried without any prior practice to blindly make his way through the first few stages. This would quickly result in many problems. He noticed that the game didn't use many sound effects due to most of the game's sound channels being used for the music. On top of this, in the first stage, the rat enemy, known as a Neek, squeaks at inconsistent times and is based on a global timer. This meant that to get much further, music cues had to be depended upon. Cadden would keep exploring and try using music cues in later stages that are quite harder. He decided to try tackling the second half of Screech's sprint. This requires flying with the character Squawks through a maze on a tight timer. After doing a combined 10 hours of putting together strategies and practice, he put together a rhythm to the music as a way to time each individual input. He compared learning this to learning a piece of music on an instrument. After trying a few more stages, he was eventually convinced that the game could be done fully blindfolded. Over the course of several months, he went level by level, memorizing number strings and rhythm cues. He also utilized strategies that we talked about earlier, such as normalized movement. A good example of normalized movement in this game is jumping while ducking upon landing, which will always move you in exact distance. Instead of tackling the any percent route through the game, Cadden focused on 102% first. This is the 100% equivalent of the game, where you need to grab every single DK coin. In October 2016, all his hard work would come together, and in one session, over the course of 16 hours, collected every single DK coin in the game, while being blindfolded. This run completely exhausted him by the end. He did not take a single break during the entire session. Cadden wasn't completely done with the game, and entering 2017, he would also run the any percent category blindfolded, and this time beat the game in a way shorter session of under 2 hours. Donkey Kong Country would end up just being the very beginning of Cadden's journey. Just in 2017, he blindly tackled the entire Donkey Kong Country trilogy, Portal, Mega Man X, and Super Mario World. Cadden would keep going game through game, with the curiosity of how possible it was to conquer it while blindfolded. 2018 would continue his streak, and he lowered the Super Mario World record again, tackled Celeste, and Link to the Pass, and he also blindly defeated Yoshi's Island over the span of 9 hours. Cadden wanted to take a step up, and decided to also start dissecting 3D games. Most people may assume that doing 3D games blindfolded would be more complex compared to 2D games, but Cadden stated that in reality, 
you have more options to work with, which makes blindfolded runs easier. He doesn't have to rely on just only music cues, as much as he does in 2D games. He instead generally uses the 3D environment more. For example, in Ocarina of Time, it was easier for him to memorize input steps from knowing an area's layout. This was easier for him than in Donkey Kong Country 2, where it's all about memorizing the number of beats that align with when to jump. Cadden successfully beat Ocarina of Time blindfolded in 2018, and to this day, this is Cadden's longest run, clocking in at just under 17 hours. Believe it or not, this was done with zero breaks. Cadden kept with the 3D games and finished his first Super Mario 64 blindfolded 70 star run in over 8 hours. A year later, he went even more modern and was able to beat Super Mario Odyssey in 5.5 hours. He has said this was one of the games that he had the most fun running. In total, Cadden has 15 games on his speedrun.com page that document him fully playing the game blindfolded. Looking at all these runs back to back tends to oversimplify the complexity of all these runs individually. Not every single project for Cadden has been successful. There are some games he has tried to tackle that he didn't know as well. His biggest example is Dark Souls, where he quickly got overwhelmed and exhausted. Cadden has a list of over a dozen games he has completely abandoned after figuring out they weren't possible blindfolded. A common roadblock you will see is a game having too much RNG, or not having a good normalization setup. Even the runs that do end up finishing can have major roadblocks. In Donkey Kong Country 2, 102%, Cadden spent over 3 hours failing in the final level due to misremembering one small detail. He was lucky to finally remember the right strategy after playing for 16 hours. A lot of the time, there are also failed close attempts before a successful run is done in one session. For example, in Super Mario 64, Cadden's first attempt took him over 16 hours to get 69 stars. He unfortunately gave up on the final star, and it wasn't until the next weekend where he attempted it again and got his 8 hour run. Just like Bubsia, Cadden stated that 75% of his time is usually spent on planning the run where 25% is the actual practice and performing the execution. While Cadden has not done blindfolded runs for a couple of years now, he is still quite passionate about the topic at hand, and if you go to his Twitch, which I will link below, he still has a ton of resources and videos for every single game that he has run blindfolded. Please check that all out. Whether it's someone goofing around for 10 minutes in front of friends, or a prepared 16-hour performance, the art of blindfolded speedruns is often unexplored and overlooked. I hope after today, there are at least a few people that are interested that otherwise would have never looked. During the making of this, 16 more entries have been added to blindfoldedgaming.com. I once again encourage you to check out this website. It has a detailed FAQ section, as well as a Discord that you can join. Keep your eyes peeled on the blindfolded community, as it is rapidly growing. Many top runners are giving interest to the concept, and it's being featured time and time again at community speedrun events. I wish I could go over every single notable blindfolded achievement, but I would never be able to end the video. A couple I would recommend is Lack Attack's 6 hour original Legend of Zelda run, and Jacog's 5 hour Paper Mario run. I also lastly want to give a major shout out to Area Is, Bubsia, Crescendo, Cadden, Miniland, and Steel Dude for all giving me their insights into running games blindfolded. This has been the art of blindfolded speedrunning. Thank you so much for watching.